Hello, hello to you, my fellow printer dweebs. You're very welcome to another community news from 3D Jake. All the news from the community and what's going on with us too. I'm joining you from the 3D Jake office in the center of Graz in Southern Austria, a country where you do not mention that film. Here's what's going on in 3D printing right now. Okay, first thing is what is in the shop. And we now have Polymaker's HT PLA filament. So this is a PLA that is heat stable up to 150 degrees. Yes, a PLA that can resist up to 150 degrees. It is also able to be printed at 300 millimeters per second and is very nicely priced at 24 euro 99. So full disclosure, this PLA filament is heat stable up to 150 degrees, but not exactly resistant at that temperature. So if you have a part printed in this material, yes, it can withstand up to 150 degrees if you don't have a load on it. So on the filament TDS, you can see two temperature values, the softening point and the HTD, the heat deflection temperature. It will soften at 152 degrees and that is without a load, but the HTD takes into account that load. So something like 0.45 megapascals, here it will start to lose shape at around 70 degrees, but after annealing, it can resist that load up to 106 degrees. But this is still very, very impressive because this filament is still PLA. It has all of the nice features of PLA. You don't need an enclosure. You don't need an abrasive resistant nozzle. It has the normal hot end and bed temperatures of PLA. It has good bridging and this comes in 14 colors. I can't wait to try this. Okay, next up. This isn't a super new and exciting product, but uh, I mean for most people, but I'm very excited about this. So we now have screws and bearings in the shop. We have M2 to M5 button head and socket heads. And in bearing world, we have double rubber shielded, double sheeted bearings, double sheeted flange bearings and spherical bearings. So some of you might not be interested in this, not super excited, uh, but I imagine there are a lot of tinkerers out there who would love to have this in the shop. And now we do. And I can't stop thinking about all the crazy cool things that I can build with these. So if anyone has any suggestions, let me know. Speaking of suggestions, we did a little poll both on Discord and here on YouTube over the weekend to see what you guys would like in our YouTube videos. So, so far, Discorders want to see more functional builds and YouTube folk want to see more tutorials. I mean, we can surely focus on both, but while you're watching this video, feel free to comment down below and let us know what you guys would like. If you want to make me really happy, say functional builds, because that's, that's a lot of fun to do. Okay, what else? So you might know we did a little video on auto ejection, print looping and job queuing uh, last week. Was it last week? It was last week. But uh, around the same time, we got the auto clear system. So the auto clear one, this is an auto ejection add on, but specifically for the X1C and P1S printers. So in our auto ejection video, we spoke about some of the limitations of using these methods. So they're just changes to G code or macros or CFG changes in the case of clipper printers. Um, one of those limitations was that you got to keep the door open for the part to be ejected. So printing with ABS or other heat resistant materials like that is basically not possible. The other limitation was that sometimes it can take a long time for that heat bed to actually cool down to an auto ejection temperature that is safe and reliable. And the auto clear kind of solves this because it will automatically open and close the door for the part to be ejected. It also has fans that will cool down the heated bed much, much faster. It is a pretty useful mod, but the real question is whether you would actually invest in this rather than using the free methods that we spoke of. I guess this question is mostly uh, aimed at those who use their printers for maybe a small business, or maybe have a little print farm. Uh, but I'm sure a lot of you have been in a situation where you needed to print one thing many, many, many times over. So let us know in the comments below. Okay, so in Prussian news, Easy Print is now out of invite only mode and is freely available. So I use this a little bit when we were testing our uh, core one back there. It is useful and you can prep a print, choose settings and start the print from basically anywhere. But even if you're just at home doing your own thing, you can start a print from the comfort of your couch using your phone, clearly for the phone addicted generation. I think having this with auto ejection would be really cool and having the core one with a camera by default would also be really useful with it. What about you guys? What do you think? Would you use it? Are you using it? Do you find it good? Let us know. 
Okay, in Bamboo news, Maker World have a lightbox generator now. This is in their Maker Lab section. To be honest, when they when they started their Maker Lab section, I was um, a little bit skeptical. I found I found the Printmon tool to be fine, but it kind of encouraged low effort designs. I've I found. Um, but actually, the lightbox generator is pretty cool. We've tested it out and it works pretty well. And I like it. I think it's great because before with lightbox designs, you generally had to have a little bit of CAD knowledge. And this makes things a lot, lot easier now. We actually have one printing right now. So yeah, I think it's pretty cool. In less happy news, the US company OpenBuild is unfortunately closing down. If you're not familiar with these guys, they are a website, resource site, and shop focusing on open source designs. They sell full kits, parts, and have bombs for all of their showcase items, but they are unfortunately shutting down their services. Of course, being open source focused, all of their core files are going to remain available on GitHub, which is awesome. This is another reason why open source is great, and there is work going on so that the forums will also remain open. I really hope they do. Sad news, but if you're interested, hop on over to their site. There is a 40% clearance sale offer on your purchase. Link is down below. In tech news, researchers at the University of Pennsylvania have developed a elastomer material that changes color when stressed. So if you stretch this, it will change color. Now, while this is created using a direct ink writing method, it could technically be applied to any additive manufacturing technique. And maybe you think this is a simple curiosity, but the first thing that popped into my head when I was reading this was what if your 3D printer belts were made out of this material and they were green when they were tensioned correctly and red when they were tensioned incorrectly. We already have heat sensitive color change materials in the shop and lots of companies are doing this sort of thing. Something like this as a filament would be really awesome. In other tech news, Oak Ridge National Laboratory researchers have been working on a vacuum assisted extrusion technique that reduces porosity in FDM prints. This is porosity specific to fiber composite materials and it essentially collapses any voids as the material is being deposited. And with this, they can actually reduce porosity down to only 2%, meaning better adhesion and better strength between layers, stronger parts. This is quite outside the scope of consumer machines, but it is relevant to large format devices where these kind of stresses pose an obstacle to overall part strength. Okay, that about does it for this month. As always, links to all of the stories and videos are posted down below in the description. And we also have a Discord server if you guys didn't know where there is talk about 3D printing on a daily basis. The link is also down below. We'll be back with another video soon, so happy printing. Until then, later.